When you're mapping areas, should you symbolize by size or by color? Hi, I'm Heather and I'm a cartographer. In this video, I'll show you how to decide how to map quantitative data in polygons. So I have some polygon data and I want to symbolize it with a numeric attribute. Should I represent that attribute with color to make a choropleth map? Or should I represent it with size to make a graduated symbol map? To answer that question, I need to know if the attribute contains raw values like counts or totals, or derived values like percentages, averages, rates, or ratios. Raw values should be mapped with size and derived values with color. Why? This rule seems pretty arbitrary, so let's look at a few analogies to understand where it's coming from. First, let's imagine that each of these circular symbols is a balloon and let's forget that it's a map. The more breaths of air I add to each balloon, the bigger it gets. The size of the circle is a good representation of the number of breaths of air. Size is an intuitive way to represent quantities, because as you add more things to a pile, the bigger the pile gets. The number that I want to map is the number of street lights in each dissemination area. The number of street lights, like breaths of air, is a raw value, so I will use size. And when I try it, I get a pretty intuitive map. I think that any casual viewer of this map will assume that the larger circles mean more streetlights. Size symbology works well with raw values. But why should you not map raw values with color? Color symbology doesn't work very well for raw values for two reasons. First, bigger areas tend to have more things in them just because they're big. Second, Large, dark areas on a map have an outsized impact on our visual perception. On this map, my eye is drawn to these big, dark areas, and I assume that's where all the street lights are. But when I look at the values, I can see that in total, there's a lot more street lights in this pale area than there are in the dark one. It's maybe a bit more obvious if I show you the actual locations of those street lights. So if you map raw values with filled areas of color, you're probably going to end up with a misleading map like this one. So that's raw values. What about derived values? For example, the number of streetlights per square kilometer. Let's consider another analogy. Let's imagine that each of these polygons is a shallow tray filled with water. If I add a drop of food coloring to a tray, its color will get darker. But if I add the same amount of food coloring to a smaller tray, the color will be even darker. The color of each tray doesn't indicate its amount of food coloring. Instead, it shows its concentration of food coloring. If I want to map the number of streetlights per square kilometer, that's a derived value, so I'll use color. My map shows the density of streetlights, and if I compare it to the locations of streetlights, I can see that the color symbology is doing a great job of identifying those areas that are well supplied with streetlights versus those areas that are more sparsely lit. But why should you not map derived values with size? Well, let's try it out and examine the results. This map shows streetlights per square kilometer with graduated symbols. Right here, I would assume that there are more streetlights in this area than in this one, but actually the opposite is true. If you map derived values with size, once again, you're probably going to end up with a misleading map. Let's look at one more example. What if I wanted to map the number of streetlights per 100 people? This is still a derived value, so I'm going to use color. The analogy of food coloring and water may seem less relevant here because I'm dividing by people instead of by area, but I'm still mapping a kind of density or concentration. So that is still going to be conveyed more clearly with color than with size. So if you want to map polygons with raw values, use size. In ArcGIS Pro, you can use graduated symbols or proportional symbols. And in ArcGIS Online, you can use counts and amounts size. And if you want to map polygons with derived values, use color. In ArcGIS Pro, you can use graduated colors or unclassed colors. And in ArcGIS Online, you can use counts and amounts color. It's actually really easy to get this choice mixed up. So even if you're sure you got it right, check your work. Pick some sample areas on your map to investigate. Do they have the values you were expecting from the symbology? Do they have the values you were expecting compared to their neighbors? Does your map make sense? 
I'm not saying that there aren't any exceptions to this rule. Of course there are. And you should always choose clarity of communication over blind rule following. But if you're going to break this rule, be careful and make sure you can justify your decision because otherwise you're really running the risk of making a misleading map.